heard of this one before, but um, it's interesting to me because it's a politician. I kind of want to ask some of my Vegas contacts about this. So this is a guy that ran for, he was a public administrator. Let's go through it because some of the stuff they're saying about like what the, the work environment was that he was creating for his office staff is um, very similar to things that I've endured at, at different um, jobs. And I think it's one of these takeaways that if you are a manager, if you are a boss, number one, there is no situation in which you should be behind closed doors with your boss um, for longer than you would spend time with like your spouse or your girlfriend or boyfriend, right? And I definitely did. I had a boss like that who um, she was behind closed doors with her boss, the director of the department for most of the day. She was unavailable to us for most of the day. And this was the second boss that she had during the time that I reported to her. And even prior to him coming on board and spending a really inappropriate amount of time one-on-one, -on -one, um, there had already been rumors in the office that she allegedly had been having an affair with the previous boss as well. You never, like, I mean, <laughs> even if it's perfectly platonic, you never want to create that kind of impression amongst your staff, you know? Okay, let's see what, what this is about. March 24th, 2022. Clark County Public Commissioner Robert Tallis would upload this video to his newly created YouTube channel in response to a series of allegations that were made against him. Hello, I'm Rob Tallis and I'm your Clark County Public Administrator. A few years ago when I started my first term, I found a disturbing situation at the office. Unfortunately, I found that there were cases that weren't being closed and had been closed for years. I also found that checks to families were waiting to go out so long that the checks went stale before the families could get them. Tragically, there were even situations where the family members died before they could receive their own checks. But I'm very happy to say that we've turned that all around under my leadership. My staff and I have increased our customer service levels. We are now closing cases and we are also making sure that checks get in the hands of families even faster. And we do it for you. I'd like to ask you for your help now. I'd like to ask you to please be sure to vote for me in this year's election. Please be sure to tell your friends and family about it. This is an important race, and I need your help. I'm Rob Tellis, and I'm running for Clark County Public Administrator. Thank you. Okay. I am Rob Tellis, and I approve this message. Les Bills is up okay. before the alarm. Sweating out Saturday. They always have this great picture of family too, right? Like, look at our happy family. We're so happy. <laughs> We're so happy, you guys. So exciting. So happy. Only two, six months later, be sitting in prison for murder. Welcome back to another episode of Dreading. Or if this is your first time seeing my channel, welcome. Today we are going to be covering the currently developing case of Jeff Gehrman and how his reporting on political corruption resulted in his death. This topic was sent to me from one of my longest running subscribers who said she lived near Tellus and wanted to see this entire situation covered. They had a personal experience with the man who is being charged with the crime. And if what they say is true, this trial will be incredibly interesting to watch. This case has mostly been reported on by one paper, the Las Vegas Journal Review, but hasn't been covered as in-depth by outside sources, which made this video a bit more difficult to produce. As this case is still currently developing, I plan on making a part two to this video when more information becomes available. Okay. This video was being made prior to the trial of Robert Tellis, and while we will be going over the evidence against him, 
which points to him being guilty of murder, he is innocent until proven guilty in the eyes of the law. If there's a case you would like to see on this channel, let me know by leaving a comment down below or emailing me at dreading.official at gmail.com. With all of that out of the way, let us begin. All right, let's go. To those who knew Jeff Garman, he was a principled and fair man. He was the type of person who had a code of ethics, to do no harm to others and to call out hypocrisies where he saw them he believed in the betterment of the world. He was old-fashioned in his belief systems and was fascinated with fighting corruption where he saw it. And where he saw it, mostly, was in Las Vegas. He loved to write and was fascinated with uncovering the truth. Specifically, he was fascinated with the mafia and how they had weaved their web into the fabric of Sin City. In 2001, Jeff would publish his novel, Murder in Sin City. Well, I mean, didn't they kind of build it? Didn't they build it? I mean, isn't that what Bugsy is all about? Um... Isn't that what Bugsy's all about? The Bugsy sequel movie was um, uh, setting up the Tropicana in the middle. I'd have to go back and watch it, but it came out, what, in the 90s or the 80s or something. Um, yeah, the, I mean, um, Las Vegas was pretty much built up by the mob as far as the stories go, right? death of a casino boss, which was highly praised. He had a deft way of drawing his readers in, getting them invested in the story he was telling, and taking them exactly where he wanted to go. In 2020, Jeff would go on to write and host the podcast, Mobbed Up, The Fight for Las Vegas, which was a collaboration between the Las Vegas Review Journal, where he worked, and the Mob Museum. In the podcast, he would discuss- Isn't that ironic, though, that, like, I mean, we already know that the, the politician is going to be the one that kills him, right? But isn't that ironic that he did all this work um, writing about the mob, mob's involvement in Vegas? And the one who gets him is just some fucked up, probably Republican. I know it's a nonpartisan position, public administrator. But basically, he's getting, he, he, he ends up getting fucked up by a, a stupid ass Republican politician that probably doesn't even have any mob connections whatsoever. I don't know yet. I don't know. I'm, I'm watching this happen. Let's go. The mobs sorted history with the city. The podcast was incredibly successful, getting nearly 1 million downloads by June of the following year. For over four decades, Jeff had worked as a columnist and journalist for multiple papers and had a reputation for himself as the guy who refused to be bought. If he was reporting on a story and his editor or higher up tried to kill it, he would only pursue his hunch harder, intent on bringing the truth to light. However, this tendency would lead to him uncovering a relatively mundane secret that would get him killed. Where the majority of people in Jeff Gehrman's life spoke of him with nothing but respect, the opposite was true of Robert Tellis. According to the people closest to him, Tellis was an incredibly enterprising man whose eyes were always fixated on whatever self-serving goal he had. He enjoyed being in positions of power and often spoke about how he was the best person for any position. And while those are not negative traits outright, especially as an attorney, the people who knew Tellis believed that they were in his particular case. Many around him felt that Robert was delusional in his thinking and believed he was more gifted than he was. Co-workers would describe Robert as being a tornado, destroying almost everything in his path and making life harder for them. He thought that he was innately better than those around him, and when it came to making workplace decisions, he actively hurt the people around him because he felt that he knew better than they did. Carlos Morales had gone to law school with Tellus at UNLV, and immediately, Tellus began making problems. They both served on student government, and it quickly became clear that Tellus wanted to run things in his own way. He didn't care much for the opinions and thoughts of other people, and instead chose to act in a way that many believed was antithetical to the success of the student government. He refused to do things by the book, instead forcing those working under him to do things, quote, his way, which often resulted in them being done wrong. Any time someone would miraculously do a good job despite his interference, he would take the credit for their work and would routinely throw others under the bus if he believed... Oh, yeah, totally. I, I, sick. <laughs> I definitely... Uh, I worked for a woman like that. I worked for a woman like that who... Um, her sole um, job, like her, her sole goal was just to make life absolutely miserable for everybody on the team. She just wanted us all to know that we were under her, which we, I mean, obviously we are, we report up to her, but she wanted to make sure that we felt it 
and like I said, she was spending most of her day behind closed doors with the director of the department, so she was unavailable to us if we had any questions. And the kind of work we were doing, proposal writing, is complicated. You know, it's not something where um, you can just run on autopilot. It's not like, uh, you know, it's a thinker job. You have to um, interview people at all levels of the company in order to get the answers and to craft how it should go. And if you don't have um, enough time with your boss to run your work by that person, um, then you might not meet your deadline and she'll blame you, right? Oh, well, you didn't come to me early enough. Well, I don't know, girlfriend, you were behind closed doors with your boss all day. So how was I supposed to come to you, right? I've worked for all kinds of ego <laughs> all kinds of crazies some of some of my my uh former colleagues are still there i don't know how they do it dude i i don't know how they can handle it because it was um miserable it was absolutely miserable working for her and yeah everybody suspected that she was having affairs with the director but we'll get to that with robert here that they were trying to upstage him. He was obsessed with his reputation and wanted to outwardly appear as a nice, trustworthy man. Despite obsessively attacking people, he seemed to believe wanted his position. He was also well known for taking advantage of his positions over people sexually. According to Morales, his time working for student government came to an end when multiple people witnessed Tellus molest a first-year law student without their consent. Morales and other witnesses reported this incident, finding it to be incredibly disturbing, but they kept the young girl's name out of the reports, as she was too nervous to come forward at the time. When Robert was made aware of these reports, he was incensed. He seemed to feel as if Morales and the other witnesses were simply trying to ruin his reputation, and went on the defensive. Robert would fly into a near violent rage, screaming and threatening those around him. He claimed he'd never touched the girl, and instead, those reports were a planned attack by jealous rivals, meant to usurp his power as the president of student government. At this point, Morales and others, who were part of the student government, reported that Tellus went on a months-long campaign against them, trying to figure out the exact identity of the girl he had been seen molesting and attacking their reports. The former student body president was obsessed with destroying everyone who he believed was against him, and it seemed to be his sole driving force. He claimed again that they were just just... What is, what is up with dudes that throw tantrums like they're three years, like three years old? I mean, I've met more than a few that um, act like utter children when they're upset. And they think that it's cool to start screaming and um, wildly swing their bodies about. And, you know, some of some people get violent. But sometimes they just want to look violent, right? They just want to scare the people around them because they have uncontrollable anger. And um, it's like, really? How, how did you get this far in life? without being able to control your emotions. Like, how, how'd you get that far in life with, uh, and, and you're still throwing tantrums like, a, like you're a three-year-old? Really? Jealous, evil, power-hungry people who couldn't stand to see a man like him do well. He made up conspiracy theories as to why people were plotting against him and genuinely felt as if it was him against the world. He threatened to sue everyone, claiming that the eyewitness reports were defamatory. When he was eventually kicked off of student government, he threatened to sue the school for their actions, and he spent months attempting to find and intimidate the first-year law student who had refused to come forward, positive that she was behind. Yeah, one of the other, one of the dudes I know that throws tantrums like that also ha is absolutely sue happy. If he doesn't get his way, He's going to try and uh, sue everybody. And from what I understand, if you try and sue too many people, you can actually lose your ability to sue. He's the one who told me that, in fact. <laughs> that if you try and file too many lawsuits in a single year, um, it, you can lose the ability to actually file anything. Because uh, you're abusing the legal system at that point. Um, but again, that's another tantrum-throwing situation. 
And that guy was also throwing tantrums at me. Um, because I didn't want to hang out at the right Irish pub with him that night. Or I didn't want to do something that he wanted to do socially. Right? It, it was usually, it boiled down to social situations. Of, he wants to do something, I want to do something different. And I have certain limitations because I have nerve damage in the back of my left leg. So if I'm not comfortable in a, a situation, like I'm getting jostled around, I'm getting bumped, it's too crowded, whatever it is, I'm not going to stay, period. But yeah, he had a fucking meltdown on me because I didn't want to stay at an Irish pub. And the entire ordeal. This would not be the last time Telus would be accused of using his position over another person to pressure them sexually. This would become somewhat of a habit for the lawyer. The extreme rage, paranoia, and obsession that Robert displayed in this instance would also follow him into every aspect of his personal and professional life. Despite his negative attributes, Robert was also known to be incredibly charming when he needed to be. In his daily life, he was cruel, demeaning, and delusional, but for short periods of time, he could mask his true nature. His ultimate goal was to become the governor of Nevada, and he was well aware that he would need as many people behind him as possible to achieve his goal. Well, thank God that's not going to happen, obviously. I don't know. I mean, we still got Trump out there who's probably, if he does win, he's going to be running the country from behind bars, but... Hopefully y'all learn in your lessons that we should not be electing crooks. He became a staple in the Las Vegas social scene, consistently attending charity events and Rotary Club events. He would talk to everyone, making sure that they knew he was an up-and-coming lawyer in the area and notably was crowned one of the nonprofit's pro bono attorneys of the year. This award didn't mention the fact that his work on numerous pro bono cases would result in his clients being defrauded and taken advantage of. He would go on to marry Marianne Ramirez Ishmael and have three children, but Robert's paranoid aggressive behavior wouldn't cease. Their relationship was said to be toxic, with Robert repeatedly cheating on her with various co-workers and women he met through work. When confronted, Robert would reportedly fly into a rage. It seemed, at least to the people around Robert, that any form of criticism leveled at him was taken as an insult. The very implication that he would cheat on his wife was so offensive that if it was brought up, he would see red. However, that didn't make the assertion untrue. On February 29th, 2020, Robert would fly into one of these rages, only this time he was in public. The couple had gone out for a date night at the Bellagio, wanting to spend quality time together away from the children. But sometime during the night, Robert became angry. Witnesses weren't able to recall what the pair was fighting about, but Robert appeared to be the aggressor, screaming in his wife's face until he was beat red. After some time, Marianne convinced Tellus that they should go back home, realizing that they were making a spectacle of themselves. However, the fight was far from over. Once in the car, Robert grabbed his wife by her neck and began to strangle her while shaking her. He let go a little after a minute, at which point he started breaking things inside the vehicle. When he began to drive them home, he continued his assault punching her at least one time in the arm, and punching the steering wheel so hard they nearly swerved off the road. Multiple other drivers recalled being on the road at the same time, seeing the vehicle speed while swerving in and out of their lane. Luckily, despite being too intoxicated to drive and in a physical altercation, they arrived home in one piece. Once there, Marianne... Yeah, here's the thing. Okay, so we're going to get the 911 call on this, but she doesn't even... She... This is like such a battered wife situation because I, she's trying to describe the danger of the situation to the 911 operator, but she doesn't actually describe all of these events that he just told you. She does not describe that on the call. She doesn't explain to the 911 operator that he had hit her, that, that there was violence leading up to that moment and that she had a legitimate reason for um making that call that um i mean obviously they they show up they can tell he's like he's totally there is a uh, police body cam footage coming up too but um i'm not sure exactly like how much who they had to interview to get like all of the rest of that i would imagine the bellagio would have had some footage because they got cameras all over the place Every one of those casinos has cameras everywhere, and they also have facial recognition and all kinds of stuff going on. 
So I imagine that if they really did their due diligence, they would have had the casino footage. They probably would have had footage of the car um, swerving all over the road because there's cameras all up and down the strip too. And the, the Bellagio is right on the main strip in um, Vegas. This is such a weird story so far. Let's go. Repeatedly told her husband to go to sleep hoping that he had calmed down from the fight. Their kids were reportedly already in bed, asleep, and she didn't want to wake them, but Robert didn't care. He refused to end the argument or go to bed, and instead continued screaming, repeatedly striking her and requesting that she kill him repeatedly. By the way, it, it looks like from all the photos that their kids were probably teenagers, so that's probably why they're not talking about there being like a babysitter in this scenario or something like that it looks like these were all teen teenage kids based on all of these photos he took with his family that he was using to um for his campaign for public administration right marianne tried to escape her husband and protect her children by barricading them all in their rooms however robert was able to break in bashing the door down and chasing them throughout the house, still in a rage. At one point, according to the police report, Robert was able to grab a hold of his wife and held her in what was described as a tight bear hug. She was unable to get free from his grip, and their kids tried to fight their father off of their mother, but it was no use. He refused to let go. Thankfully, Marianne had been able to call the police while in her children's bedroom. Yeah. Emergency. Emergency. Orozco, 17887. Do you need police, fire, or medical? Yes, hi. Can you please send somebody here? My husband is going crazy. He's trying to make us, like, hurt him, hurt him or something. Okay, Am I my son? What is your address? It is 9624 Spanish Steps Lane. And that was 9624? Yes, Spanish Steps. Okay, and what's, what is he doing now? He, he just won't leave us alone. He had too much to drink tonight, and it's just, we're, he, me and my kids are scared. Okay. Has anybody been hit or pushed, ma'am? Well, he tried to hurt me, but that was, it's fine. He hasn't touched me since. No, I'm not okay. I didn't think Nobody needs an ambulance? Yeah. No, no ambulance. Just somebody to come. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and or somebody out there. already have the call set. Right. Okay. Now, what's your husband's Thank you so name? much. Rob. Rob? Is it Robert yes. or is it? Yeah, Robert. Robert. Okay, what is his last name? K-S-T-E-L-L-E-S. -L -L -E and is he white, black, Hispanic, or Asian? He's Hispanic. Okay, how old is he? 43. What's his date of birth, ma'am? 76. All right, now he's calmed down now that he knows I'm talking to you. Okay, how tall is he approximately? Five, five, seven. Then medium heavy belt. Um, medium. And what color clothing does he have on today? He's just wearing a, a burgundy dress shirt and boxers. Okay, and uh, besides the drinking, has he been doing any drugs or does he have any weapons on him? No, just drink, just the drinking. Okay. And what is your first name? May, M-A-E. And your last name, May? Ismael, I-S-M-A-E-L. I'm sorry, spell that for me again. I-S-M-A-E-L. Thank you. And a good phone number? Uh, this number? Thank you. Okay. And you said he's calmed down right now? Yeah, now he's, now he's calmed down. He's putting his clothes, he's putting his pants on. I think he might leave. Okay. Um, if he does leave, what color make and model is the vehicle he would be leaving in? Um, a brown BMW X3. Okay, is it a two-door, four-door? It's a four-door. Is it older or newer? Newer. Okay, do you know the like, plate number by any chance? I don't. No worries, it's fine. Okay, I do have a call set up. If he does happen to leave, just give us a call back to let us know. And, you know, if you know where he's going or what direction he's leaving in, just um, give us that information as well, okay? But I do have um, a call set up for officers to respond. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Bye-bye. Bye. The following is the police body cam footage from his arrest. I'm not trying to be like, 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 I'm not trying to be
you want to hold him here, I'll bring my car up. Don't do anything more stupid than you've already done, please. Oh my God! What the hell am I? Our cameras, cameras are on. Cameras? Can anybody tell me who I hit? Don't type. Who the hell did I hit? Hold him for the Who did I hit? Because I didn't hit anybody. Who did I hit? Who did I? For for those of you uh, who haven't been to Vegas. When you uh, go to the casino and um, they'll give you free drinks, um, and you, especially like if you sit at one of the the bars where they have like um, video poker or video um, blackjack or whatever, they will just every I think it's like um, they can give you a drink something like every twenty or thirty minutes uh, while you're sitting there. So, motherfucker probably sat there, um, in, in the Bellagio, because I was recently at the Bellagio, I totally know what this looks like. Um, you just sit there and gamble, <clears throat> and so even if you're losing money, you're basically only losing about as much as you would pay for those drinks to begin with. And if you sit there long enough, you can get fucking trashed, and it sounds like that's what happened to this motherfucker. Because listen to how he's slurring. Holy shit. Because yeah, I didn't hit anybody. This is like... This is like totally like... You guys just want to take me down because I'm a public official. No, we what don't. Did I, hit? I didn't hit anybody. I didn't touch anybody. You guys just want to take me down because I am a public official. You don't... You just want to take me down because I'm a public official. I did not touch anybody. I haven't hurt anybody. I am just being approached and like you guys want to take me down because I'm a public official. That's it. I'm, I'm a public I'm, official. I'm sure your supervisors will love to see this bloody damage when they I'm see it. I'm a public it. official. We'll and all you want to do is take me down for being a public official. Why did you? Why are you take me down? I haven't touched like anybody. I've hurt anybody. It looks like it's broken. This is a civil rights violation. You guys just want to take me down. I haven't touched anybody. This is my home. I haven't hurt anybody. I haven't touched anybody. I love my family. I love my wife. Mm -hmm. You guys want to take me down. That's all it is. Why are you taking me away from my freaking house? Why do you have any suspicious... Sit back. Wow, his neighbors must really love him. Can you imagine having this shit happen right in your neighborhood, like in the middle, like middle of the night, and you've got this belligerent piece of shit yelling like that? I'm a public official. <laughs> I'm a public official. You're violating my civil rights. <laughs> I, I'm. What happened? Why do you have any cause to take me home? Why do you have any cause to take me? You're not making any sense right now. Do, do you have any cause to take me? Brian, do you have any cause to take me? This seatbelt's being stupid. What does it cost to take me? Go to the other side. I've been touched anyone. I've not touched anyone. I've not touched anyone. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you too. I haven't touched anyone. I have not touched anyone. I've not touched anyone. You guys probably have a right to talk to you. I was like, I'm on town center. And basically said, hold on, hold on. Hold on. This event should have been the end of his career. A public servant had assaulted his wife and terrorized his children. But instead, this instance was swept under the rug. He was able to get the domestic violence charge down, and the issue was never publicized. That is, until 2022. Tell us, uh, let's go ahead and call the case. Robert, tell us, C122698A and B, and time set for trial. This has been resolved. Okay. We're going to submit on the B count. B is in boy? Yes, Judge. Okay. There'll be a 90-day uh, suspended sentence with a six-month fraud standard trouble order. The defendant will do the corrective thinking course. Pay a bail forfeiture in the amount of $418.
In a successful majority to be dismissed, Count A is dismissed today pursuant to negotiations based on witness issues. Right. Mr. Goodman, is that a correct statement of the resolution? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Good Tellus, are you agreeable with this resolution? Yes, Your Honor. You do have the right to have a trial where the prosecution has the burden of proving the case beyond a reasonable doubt. By accepting the resolution, obviously you're giving up that right. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any questions before I make it official? No, Your Honor. All right. As such, sir, this will be what we call a submittal on the record for the original charge of resisting a public officer, requiring you to do basically three things over the next six months. First thing you'll need to do is stay out of trouble. We call that a broad stay out of trouble. No new criminal offenses, no arrests, no citations. You will have to attend, pay for, and complete the corrective thinking class, which is given online. It costs $60. You also need to post $418. We call this a bail forfeiture amount, but basically it's a fine to you in that amount, $418. And if you do all these things, you'll get the best result that you can get out of a criminal matter, and that is the dismissal. If you fail, you will have the conviction of resisting a public officer without the benefit of trial, as well as 90 days of jail to credit. Just to make sure that's what you've agreed to again, correct? Yes, Your Honor. It's a good deal. Keep it in your hands out of mind. Agreed? Agreed, Your Honor. All right. We'll go ahead and get you that six-month return date. The A charge, as discussed, will be dismissed. March 30th at 830 for status charge? March 30th, 2021 at 830. We'll go ahead and get you the return slip. Do we get the referrals? I got this. I think it's the call. Or they can go to the fourth floor, but that has the information how they can sign up for the class. Okay, this is a new class. We think that is the appropriate information. And good luck. Thank you. Have a good day, Your Honor. Okay, so we already know this guy is a problem, not only in his family life, but also in the workplace, right? Like his colleagues are complaining about him. He had problems at UNLV where he was in student government. He's constantly trying to lift himself up into power positions. He acts inappropriately, and he apparently can't control his drinking either. So that's where we land right now. And just as a side note, I'm doing my best to stretch out my legs right now. It's been a very difficult week for me. I'm in a lot of pain this week. A lot of pain this week. So if I have to pause and throw up, because sometimes when the pain gets severe, I actually have to, I end up projectile vomiting if it gets really bad, you guys. And it's not, today is a harder day for me. I'm going to try and stretch while I'm doing this, while I'm doing this commentary. At Urban Plates, $12 or less buys you... Okay. Oh, the article. As Robert stated multiple times during his arrest, he worked as an elected official in Clark County. More specifically, he worked as the public administrator. As noted on ClarkCounty.gov, the public administrator serves two important functions. They secure property of people who have passed away while a search for family or the decedent's executor is performed. Tellus assumed the office in 2019 when he ran unopposed for the position. But like he had in every other aspect of his life, he came into the position like a tornado. He didn't care for... By the way, for those of you who are looking to, like, dem enter or whatever, that is a really easy way to get fucking in. I've seen a lot of people do that with party positions, too. They just look for things that are, like, um, unopposed. There's no challengers. And you can just slide right the fuck in. And um, I've seen people do that at the state level in California. But also a big one um, that people try out as a starter position is water board. Water board or, like, city council. 
the established rules and regulations, nor did he care for the mental health and the well-being of those working with him. Instead, he wanted to do things his way. What his way entailed changed every day. Some days, he was in a good mood. He was willing to work with his peers, allowing them to go by the book and help the people of Nevada. But on most days, he would come in in a rage, already upset at the people working under him and completely unwilling to help anyone. The men and women who worked under him had been there for years at that point and watched as their workplace turned into a place they no longer recognized. There was well, this, this happens all the time with people like this dude because, like, once you fuck up like that, then all of your anger compounds if you're a dude like that because, oh, no, now I have this thing that I need to hide from everybody, right? Um, I, I embarrassed myself. I had to face legal consequences. So now I'm going to be in a really fucking cranky mood all the time. My ex-boyfriend acted like this. When he got a DUI, um, the, the entire next year was fucking un un unbearable because, um, you know, they, they are so narcissistic and so proud that, um, they can't deal with the fact that they're trying to make up for, you know, pay the consequences of what they did. And they do not want anybody around them to have any sort of like superiority over them. So for example, I've never had a DUI. I've never had any legal trouble. I mean, I've had traffic tickets or whatever, parking tickets, like, pe you know, like normal people. But, um, I've never had anything like that where um, I've had to um, kind of grovel to my family and be like, can you help me through this, right? But when people like that, and like my ex-boyfriend, when they get into situations like that, it just makes it worse. They're just miserable all the fucking time because they fucked up and they don't want you to be the person who didn't fuck up they would rather you have fucked up than they right <laughs> it becomes this is what happens with abusive people um but apparently this guy gets so abusive that he actually kills somebody so let's go no talking to Robert they found, as any concerns they tried to raise would cause him to fly into a rage, believing they were trying to undermine him. Mm. The environment got so bad that at numerous points, his employees tried to go over his head and complain to the higher-ups about what Robert was doing. They wanted someone to come in and guide Robert and inform him that the way he was behaving wasn't appropriate and teach him how to create a cohesive work environment. But even then, nothing was done. The only way that they could improve their workplace, they were told, was to either run against him in the upcoming election or to get him removed from office. Feeling as if they had nowhere else to go, multiple of Robert's employees would resolve. I don't know how they would have gotten him removed from the office unless they had actually circulated a recall petition and that's pretty difficult you have to get a, um you have to get a, a certain amount of signatures based on the voting population of the area his district what you know whoever elected him in the first place you have to get a certain person as far as at least that's how it goes in california i would imagine it's probably similar in nevada but to do a recall is pretty fucking challenging the GOP likes to do that shit all the time. They're constantly trying to re recall politi politicians just over fucking petty reasons because they didn't win the race. And what we're what we're learning is that the GOP can only win pretty much um, when they cheat. That's about uh, they have to they have to fucking like try and suppress the vote or try and recall you under false. Um, pretenses. It's, it's, um, I, we've said like the Gavin Newsom recall, the Josh Newman recall, the, um, uh, Gavin fortunately survived his Josh. We ended up having to get reelected, um, because they lied, they lied to the electorate, um, and said that, uh, what they were signing to get that recall measure out, they told them they hired can canvassers to stand in front of grocery stores and tell the voters that what they were signing was a repeal the gas tax initiative but what they were in fact signing was recall josh newman for state senate 
and you know they're they're dishonest and that's that's why they put out like fake voting boxes they did that um during i think the the last election cycle or maybe it was the one before that they were putting out fake ballot collection boxes um you're not allowed to do that either like if you're going to assist somebody to get their ballot to the box they have to at least know that you're doing it for them. You can't just like put out a box and be like, you can drop off your ballot here. Cause we have no idea if all those ballots got turned in, you know? It's very easy at that point, once the Republicans all have your ballots in a fake box for them to plug into PDI, which is the program that we all use to canvas and look up the names on the, those envelopes. And be like, okay, this one's a Democrat. Let's throw this one out. Right? Certainly increases your odds that you're going to um, get your candidate in if you're throwing out ballots like that. Right? GOP is always, look at Trump. He's like, oh, look, this is happening all over the country. You know where it's happening. It's happening in fucking, in Republican areas. It's, it's the Republicans doing this bullshit. I know, I, I digress. I talked to a man that they felt was able to showcase Robert's negative behavior for what it was. And that man was Jeff Gehrman. On May 16th, 2022, Jeff published his article, County Office in Turmoil, with secret video and claims of bullying. Hostility to the Las Vegas Review Journal. The following is that article. The Clark County Public Administrator's Office has been mired in turmoil and internal dissension over the past two years with allegations of emotional stress, bullying, and favoritism leading to secret videotaping of the boss and a co-worker outside of the office. A half dozen former and current employees interviewed by the Review Journal are alleging the hostile work environment was fueled by the elected administrator of the office, Robert Tellis, carrying on an inappropriate relationship with a staffer that has harmed the office's ability to deal with the public and overseeing the estates of those who have died. The staffer, Roberta Lee Kinnett, 45, has acted in some cases as an office supervisor beyond her assigned duties as one of the several estate coordinators because of her favored status with TELUS, the employee said. This is one of the reasons that a lot of um, companies have like anti-nepotism um, clauses or uh, anti-fraternization, like they don't want you to date like your work colleagues and stuff. Because even if you're doing it peer to peer, where it, there is not going to be a, a, a quid pro quo type of situation, um, even if it's peer to peer, if it doesn't work out, you, you've just created a really hostile work environment for everybody. It's not just going to be a problem of the two of you breaking up. It's also going to be a problem of the dynamics of the office if you're trying to fuck around with your colleagues like that. I have not dated anybody I have worked with since I was 17 and I was in a movie theater. <laughs> I have not tried to date anybody I have worked with. And I generally do that with my volunteerism too. Because if I'm going to be in a volunteer organization, I don't want to kind of, I don't, I don't want that kind of dynamic either. Right? So I try and make myself like mama bird, right? I, I'm like, I'm, I'm the person who's like taking care of everybody, but I also want them to not have any sexual feelings about me whatsoever because it can go south so quickly if you do that kind of shit. Because of the brewing animosity, a top supervisor under TELUS, Rita Reed, decided to run against him in this year's Democratic primary. And several employees oh. took the bold step Oh, he's a Democrat, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I made assumptions. I made assumptions. My apologies. He's a Democrat. Oh, my God, you guys. Of secretly videotaping Tellus and Lee Kinnett meeting in the backseat of her car at a parking garage to show proof of the relationship.
No, but seriously, to the Republicans out there that probably got pissed off at some of my earlier commentary in this video, I do apologize. Apparently he was running for the Democratic primary. Wow. I'm shocked. I am. I'm shocked. Well, you know what? I've met some Democratic men that are this bad. Not, not murderous bad, but, you know, throwing tantrums bad. But I've met some Republicans like that, too. And I do apologize for making the assumption that because of his hostility and aggression, <laughs> I apologize to you guys. Um, he's a Democrat. Well, all right, let's go. I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to do a part two because my phone can only handle about like an hour of video before I can clip it, and um, if I go over an hour, I cannot uh, trim off the ads that are at the bottom of the page. Um, this is almost halfway through, so let's go as far as I can here, and then um, I will start a part two. Look at that, she's not there. Mm -mm. Those movies are not very good taste, are they? One employee okay. filed a retaliation complaint with the court against Tellus on May 9th, records show. Both Lee Kennett and Tellus, 45, an attorney, strongly denied having any improper relationship but acknowledged that they have become friends. Tellus said he has relied on Lee Kennett's support while making office improvements resisted by employees from the previous administration. Both are married. Tellus blames a handful of old-timers for exaggerating the extent of the relationship and falsely claiming that he has been mistreating them. He said they have filed complaints against him with the county in the past that were not substantiated, and he questioned the timing of the latest accusations as he seeks a second term in office. The mm -hmm. office tension was felt during a recent visit, as employees loyal to Tellus explained that there were two factions, a group of mostly new workers hired by Tellus and the other group with ties to the former public administrator, John Cahill, who retired in January 2019 after 12 years. John, who endorsed Tellus in 2019, is now backing Reed and voicing concerns about the well-being of the workers. The office has eight full-time employees, three part-time support staffers, and roughly 15 part-time investigators who spend most of their days in the field. When someone dies and there are no immediate family members to deal with the estate, the office takes possession of the property and investigators attempt to locate relatives so the property can be turned over to them. Emotional stress claims. Members of the warring office factions say they have suffered emotional stress, which in some cases have impaired their physical health. Assistant Public Administrator Reed includes herself among those affected by the upheaval. Reed, who has worked in the office for 15 years, said she jumped into the race knowing she faces an uphill primary battle with Tellus on June 14th. Her office is right next to his in the building at 515 Shadow Lane. I came to the decision not very easily because it affects my life dramatically, Reed said. But I want to do whatever I can to let the voters know that this is not the right man to be in charge of any department. We're always on guard and we're always under stress. All of the people in his office deserve to be treated with respect and dignity, and the people we serve 
deserve to be treated with respect and dignity. Holdover staffers said they secretly videotaped Tellus and Lee Kinnett after work several times, slipping into the back of her Nissan Rogue earlier this year in the shadows of a high-rise mall parking garage. The staffers said they recorded the clandestine meetings to offer proof to county officials of the office dividing relationship. The review journal has obtained and viewed videos of the meetings. This is unacceptable, disgusting behavior for a public servant, a state coordinator Alicia Goodwin said in the confidential retaliation complaint. Physical contact with a subordinate in a public place and letting that subordinate use favoritism she is getting from these inappropriate meetings to secure power and privileges above others in the office is affecting most of the staff in an extremely negative manner. Tellus responded that Lee Kennett, who also worked under Cahill, is simply one of the people he can lean on. While he has tried to change the office atmosphere, he said he caught Reed spying on him in the past, an allegation she denied. Both Tellus and Lee Kinnett acknowledged driving separately to the parking structure at the Las Vegas North Premium Outlets Mall several times earlier this year and entering the back seat of her car. They said they only talked about the problems in the office and only hugged each other. Inappropriate relationship denied. I think it's horrible that they recorded this and they're trying to destroy my life and my marriage when I'm actually infinitely in love with my wife, Tellus said. I was trying to get things off my chest with someone who understands and now it's being framed as though I'm cheating on my wife. Lee Kennan added, I have not had an inappropriate relationship with him. I would not be friends with a man who thinks he's going to have an inappropriate relationship with me. When asked why the duo didn't go to lunch or somewhere else less secretive to privately discuss work, Lee Kennett said they can't do that without someone in the office making assumptions about them. She said she suggested going to the back seat of the car because she wanted to make sure Tellus would listen to her concerns face to face. Tellus said the meeting location, which is across the street from the Clark County Government Center on South Grand Central Parkway, probably was chosen out of paranoia because of the discord in the office. Goodwin denied to come. Okay, I'm going to pause here because I'm getting to my time limit. But give me a fucking break. Like, seriously, you could have just, like, talked over the phone. <laughs> I need a shoulder to cry on. <laughs> if this was um, really just a platonic relationship, they could have talked over the phone. They didn't need to hook up in the backseat of a car like a fucking teenage couple. Right? Okay, this is part one. We're going to take a little break and I'll, as I clip this and then we'll do part two.